So guys, this is Silver Pro back again with another video. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I know the video is a tiny bit dark um, because I've got a light on the way. I've just ordered a light today. So I went to like Harvey Norman and JB Hi-Fi and for some reason they don't carry camera lights or if they do, they carry really cheap ones. Like, like JB Hi-Fi only had two camera lights out of the whole store. So I don't know why that is, but it's how they operate, I guess. So I had to order one online. So I've got a camera light coming soon, guys. Um, but anyway, I'm doing this review because I felt like my last review of this machine was kind of just blase and just I just threw it out there because I was just starting my channel. So I want to explain things to you guys a little bit more. Uh, I wonder if I should zoom in just one there. Here we go. I want to explain things to you guys a little bit more so you, so you know everything about the machine, what it does and how it works. Um, so anyway, as Sigma Metal, uh, Metalytics Verifier Pro, um, used to find fake coins. Uh, you know, some people argue XRF's better, but if I was using XRF, I'd probably only use it in a refiner refinery situation or with uh, jewelry. You know, if you're buying jewelry, that's why some bullion dealers have XRF because uh, they're mainly buying jewelry and stuff too. XRF usually uh, tests 10 microns, um, so basically plating or, or you know, only only a very, uh, only a bit, not very deep into the silver, right? Whereas if you check resistivity uh, with the Metalytics Pro, it goes all the way through a coin. Depends on the thickness of the metal. Like I wouldn't use this machine to test kilo bars, um, but then again, I I think kilo bars are are not that popular these days. You know, I see guys buying them and then within a few months, they're selling them back on, on Facebook and stuff because, um, you know, still the silver price hasn't climbed or, you know, I, I just, I feel like kilo bars are, you know, just something that you put away for 10, 20 years, you know, and I feel like a lot of people go into, go into buying silver thinking, oh, well, I'll get the cheapest silver and I'll buy a kilo bar and then they get this bar and they don't do anything with it and it's just sitting there as a paperweight and they're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and silver doesn't climb and they're realizing, well, geez, why do I buy this bar? You know, like, like it depends. If you're a very patient person and you can hold on to a silver bar for 10 years, then buy a silver bar. But if you're not a patient person and you want to maybe buy, buy some silver and then sell it in like a year or two's time, you know, seeing what happens with silver and that, of course, you're going to pay a small premium on coins. But most of the time, if you go to sell silver coins, like one ounce, two ounce coins, you'll end up like getting your money back or making a profit. Whereas if you're trying to sell a silver bar, you know, everyone is so like wanting silver bars for cheaper and stuff and because it's because it's closest to spot. So really, I don't see silver bars as a good short term investment. I only see them as a good long term investment, 10 years, 20 years, right? Um I don't buy silver bars. The only time I buy silver bars is if I buy 10 ounce silver bars because they're pretty popular. And, um, you know, I know if I buy a 10 ounce silver bar and I want to sell it in a year or two's time, it's pretty easy for me to sell. But if you're selling a kilo, the other problem with, with kilo silver bars too, which people don't realize is, yeah, they're closest to spot. But the problem is if silver goes up and goes to like, let's say it goes to like, I don't know, like $100 an ounce or $200 an ounce, you got to try to get rid of that silver. And one, you could sell back to a bullion dealer, but if silver goes to $100, $200 an ounce, are the bullion dealers going to maintain their pricing or are they going to be like Perth Mint, where Perth Mint's minus 10, 20%? So, uh, you know, that's kind of what you don't know what's going to happen ahead of time. Like, like will, will bullion dealers change their stance on on giving spot if, if the silver price goes right through the roof? You know, because really, bullion dealers can dictate whatever they want. They could say, oh, well, we'll give you, 10, we'll give you minus 10%. Um, because Perth Mint give minus 20% or, or whatever. Perth Mint give this percentage or that percentage. So really, um, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. And I, I just, I don't know, I never was into bars, man. I mean, if, 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 it's a, if it's a one ounce or a five ounce bar that has some patterns on it and it's real pretty, then I'll probably buy it. Um, but then again, I'm speaking on a short-term investor's mindset. If you're a long-term investor, then, you know, by all means, buy the kilo bars you know, buy whatever bar, 500 gram bars. Um, if you're going to keep it for 10 years, then by all means do that. Anyway, guys, kind of got off, to off topic then. Uh, there. Um, 
so yeah, XRF tests about 10 microns, even like $30,000 machines. Uh, well, I mean, $30,000, $40,000 machines, you know, some of them might measure a little bit more than that. But really, um, you know, even if you get a very thick bar, you're still going to have to drill through that bar. You know, you're not going to you're not going to get away with uh, just testing it with an XRF machine. Um, so really, this this machine is just a something portable to help spot fakes, fake coins, you know, uh, fake ten ounce bars. Um, you can get a bridge for it to see into kilo bars and stuff like that. But I never got the bridge, so I, I don't have any experience on that. I'm only going to review what I've used. Um, to you guys, what I'll do is I'll turn this on, and then first of all, it asks me to comes up with an intro screen, asks me to calibrate, so we we'll calibrate, and then I'll just go through the menu here. Uh, where are we? So I've got it on gold at the moment, but if I go through the menu here, you've got metals, weight, measurements, and calibration. So if we go to metals, we have like a whole different selection of gold, like you know, pure 91.7, 90, uh, gold eagles. 98.6, 91.7, uh, 22 carat. Um, so we got a whole bunch of like settings for different types of gold. Um, let's see if we'll go, no, won't go anymore. Shows how much I use gold. I, I only really use the uh, the 22 carat or the pure gold setting. So we go across and we go across the silver. So we got silver pure, 92.5% sterling, 90%, 90% pre-1900, 90% Britannia, and I'm not sure if there's any more. Shows how much I use these settings as well. I usually just just use the pure silver. Um, then we've got all different metals here, like platinum, palladium, rhodium, copper, uh, calibrator. I've never heard of that. Uh, rhodium pamp. Is there any more there? Let's go down. No, there's not. Okay. So we go across again, and we've got actual coins that we can select, like, you know, gold eagle, gold Britannia, um, silver, 80%, uh, Canadian, um, you know, just just a few coins that we can select there, and then we got gold, crew round, and eagle, um, and then we'll go. No, we we'll go. So we can't go across anymore. I'm just checking if there's any more. Done all that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So then we go to. Oh, we'll get off that. We'll change that back to. Let's change it back to silver. So then we get a weight. So you can select your weight in grams, or in uh, you put in your own weight here. Um, if I was doing like you know 1966 coins or anything like that, I'd put in my own weight here. But or we can get ounces. So I'll put that on one ounce now because we're probably going to test it soon anyway. Um, but yeah, so you got all those settings there, and you got measurements. So I want to show you measurements here. So so this is why a lot of people say that these machines can be foot full because the first Sigma Metallics machine uh, did not have specific gravity or or dimension, basically dimension testing. So if I get a silver maple leaf here, put that on there, sit through maple leaf, and I basically test the uh, out allow plating, and then it tests the straight through reading. And it shows diameter and thick thickness and stuff like that. So if we want to, so basically that's a good coin. Um, I can show you something if I had another coin here. So I have a 50 cent piece here, guys. Um, and I'll just show you what happens when I put that through. So if I put that over here, it will say something's not right. You know, readings differ 10%. Now, I can do that the other way too. That there, and it shows off. And even if I put that there, it's still not gonna, still not gonna show good readings because it's reading straight through the coin, showing that something's wrong. Minus 10%. Something's wrong with the plating. So put that back on there. And then that shows, so it's normal. And then if we want to measure it, because the thing is, if you're trying to fool someone with gold, you probably use tungsten or, or some, something like that. Something with a high resistivity value um, to try and fool this machine. But the problem is once you do that, you're testing dimensions as well. And if you put something like tungsten or any other metal inside that gold bar or inside that coin, then the coin is going to become fatter or it's going to become wider. And see, it tells us what the millimeter is millimeters is there I mean, granted it's probably not 100 percent accurate with the with the thickness measurements but so we go round round silver coin and we measure it and the coin is right on the green line granted maples are a little bit smaller in diameter than the perth mint coins well i feel they are because every time i measure a perth mint coin on here it's right on the line and when i measure a maple it's like just before the line as long as this maple is on the green it means it's a it's a pure basically pure maple and it can be 
pure silver, one ounce maple. And it can be between 36.7 to 38 and 39.8 millimeters in diameter, maximum, minimum and maximum range. So if it goes past this line here and it's still on the green, it's still within the acceptable range, okay? But if it, um, but you know, really, there's not that much variation between bullion coins. Bullion coins will have a tiny bit of variation in diameter, maybe 0.1 of a millimeter or something like that. But like they're ne they're never perfect, you know. Um, and same with the weight too. There is always a always a tiny bit, uh, 0.1 of a gram in in weight difference between some coins. You know, they're they're never exactly uh, as you guys probably know. You know, you may get a one ounce coin and and it'll be maybe 30 grams or 30 point five grams and then you get a one ounce coin that'll be 31.5 grams so it's never they're never exactly the same um, so th this basically shows that it's a pure silver maple right so now i can do another coin here which is an old three ounce uh, no, old one ounce 1994 kookaburra it's got a lot of tarnish on it and stuff but i keep it because my uh, mother bought it for me so when i was young she used to uh yeah anyway so if i go here and then it shows basically it's in the yellow. Now the reason why it's showing closer to the green out of the yellow is because it's 39 silver, but Perth, Perth Mint 39 silver is a tiny bit more pure than the 39 silver you get from America. If it was an American, if it was American Eagle, it would probably be here somewhere. Um, but because the Perth Mint 39 silver at that time was pretty a pretty good 39 silver, it's showing to more towards the green. So. With this yellow, this means it's 39 silver, but it means, oh, we have to check as well. We can check the diameter because it's mainly it's mainly designed for silver eagles because there's a lot of fake silver eagles out there. So if we check this diameter, it just says, yeah, you know, it's okay. If I pull this out of the capsule, it'll be okay. But yeah, so, and then we can check like, uh, what is it? We can, we can actually check these 50 cent pieces if we want. Uh, so if we were to put in a weight, we would go weight. I think it's 13, is it 13.26? 13.26, yeah, I think it is. If I can remember rightly. 13.26 for 50 cents, uh, 1966. Somewhere around there anyway. I hope so, I hope it's right. Otherwise I'm gonna look stupid. Um, yeah, actually, wait. Oh God, click off that. 13.26, wait. Uh, okay, I think that's come out wrong, but anyway. We'll test this. We'll see what the measurement is. I think I might need to put it in again. Uh, and we go metal. So we're going to go 80%. Uh, where are we? 80%. Uh, it should show just in the green. Yeah, see. It shows a little bit off to the side. So almost into the, into the red. But then again, see, it's changed the weight there. So we need to go back, which is what I thought. Um this again, I don't know why that's changed that actually, to be honest. 13, 1, 2, 6. Granted, I haven't had this machine for a very long time, guys. Okay, 13.26. Right, there we go. Down there. So it's showing just on the line there, because it's not really designed for 80% um, Australian, or it could also be. Let's see if it does it a little bit better there. Yeah, see a little bit better there. So it's giving us a little bit of a different reading because of the high relief. If you put this on flatter surfaces, then it's going to read better. Um, so then we go measurement, round, and then it'll give us a measurement for 1966 piece and piece, or basically a silver coin that is 80%. Um, and then you can see it's right in the green line. So basically that's telling us that it's a good coin. So yeah, guys, a lot of people kind of bagged out, kind of bag out Sigma Pros because they don't understand them. And if you understand XRF, you realize XRF is only really testing plating or, or, or not all the way through uh, the bar because no machine can test all the way through a silver bar, like a, like a really thick silver bar, like you have to drill through. There's, there's, no, there's no way around it. Um, but saying that, you know, you want to weigh your coins as well. You want to have a little scales on you so you can just get get the exact weight, and then you can put the weight in manually. If you don't if you don't want to do like one ounce or two ounce, like you know if you're not sure who you're buying from, you can weigh the coin and then put it in manually, and then the, the machine will give you measurements according to the weight of the coin also. So it's just a really good tool for spotting fakes. Uh, I've spotted 
two fake gold bars already that were just five grand bars. Um, and I'll show you this too, guys. Gold grand, five grand, five grand bar there. So we're in metal. Let's go back to gold. From there. Okay. And there we go. It's in the green. So it's basically saying that the resistivity is good for that. But if we want to check it further, we go measurements, all right? Because what I said in the in the start of the video is, uh, wait a minute, no, we've got to go wait. I'm going to wait. So usually I'd measure this so we would have the exact weight. Five gram, all right? So what I was saying in the start of the video is, usually if you've got a fake coin or a fake, fake like gold, they'll use something with a high res resistivity. And what that'll do is it'll show good here, but then when you go to measurements, it'll be really thick. It'll be the, the, like, it, or if you look at it under there, it will show a really thick measurement. And as you can see here, basically perfect. I can't put this on there because we've got the black card there. But basically perfect measurement showing that it's in the green. Um, but yeah, with fake coins and fake gold guys, there'll be one thing out. There'll be either resistivity out or there will be dimensions out. Um, and you need to look for that. If you, Another thing that I've told people is, if you have a five grand Perth Mint bar, and you try to buy the same bars that you, that you have yourself, okay? So if you know this is a perfect five gram Perth Mint bar, you put them side to side like this, and you see this diameter here. And you look for that. You look for any thickness. Or you can basically get a, a pair of calipers. Oh no, you couldn't get a pair of calipers because you can't take that out of there, sorry. So sometimes they use calipers. But yeah, you basically put these side to side and you make sure that thickness is identical. Even if you need to take a photo and then enlarge the photo, you check that this thickness, this bar is the same. And then you can probably measure, you know, there to there or there to there. Because with fake bars, they'll be a little bit fatter and they'll have a different capsule. You know, sometimes there's, there's such good bars that you can't, that, that it's hard to tell with just the card and the capsule. So you need to look to the side, right? You look to the front, you need to measure them both up with a ruler, right? Make sure the capsules are the same diameter. Make sure the card is the same diameter. Um, you know, there's tons of different things you can do to spot fakes. Um, but the Sigma Pro just gives you that little bit of an advantage. And I don't work for Sigma. I just bought this from America. I believe in the machine. It saved me a few thousand dollars already. One on a gold coin that someone was trying to palm off where the resistivity was out measurement was right weight was tiny bit out um so this machine can actually save you a lot of money guys granted it costs you a bloody lot of money if you ask bullion dealers they was they kind of they get a bit narky about it because what this machine does is it basically gives consumers the power to check their own coins and if you're in an industry where you're a bullion dealer you know you mainly want people to come to you to buy coins and that and grant granted most of the time, I buy my coins from bullion dealers anyway. Like, um, you know, most of the time, I'll buy my stuff from Swan Bullion or something like that because I trust them. But I guess bullion dealers are a little bit up in arms with this machine because it, it gives you, the consumer, the power to check your own gold, to check your own coins. And, you know, if, if you uh, buy gold privately, you know, bullion dealers would rather you come to them to, to buy the gold from them than buy it privately. Granted, I don't buy a lot of metals privately, but I have this machine here. Just in case, you know, just in case I see something that I want to buy and I'm like, oh man, I don't want to have to travel all the way down to freaking, you know, Perth Mint to buy something or, you know, and if I can get a good deal, which is hard to get a good deal these guys, days, guys, because everyone wants full price for their gold and silver. Even me, if you, if you, if you were wanting to buy this gold bar now with the war, $520. I don't care that Perth Mint has it for 470 That's 520 bucks to me if I'm going to sell it. Granted, I'm not going to sell it because I know where gold is going. Um, so, you know, I, I in order for me to sell that, I have to sell it where I feel comfortable. Remember my last video? I said to you, I have to sell it where I feel comfortable. If gold rises tomorrow and goes right up, I'm going to have, you know, that sinking feeling in my stomach. And I don't want that sinking feeling in my stomach, guys. So, anyway, guys, I hope this video has helped you. I hope to show you a little bit about the machine. And I'll catch you in the next video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you're new to this channel. And uh, yeah, take care, guys. Bye.